How's everyone doing? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to look at angles of elevation and depression, which are really just worded trig problems that you have to draw before you can start doing the maths. The reason that I like this topic so much is these questions are always worth three or four marks in an exam, but the maths you have to do is really just a one-step equation. We do have some pro tips in order to draw these effectively, because once you're on top of that, you're going to find the rest incredibly easy. So the first thing we've got to do is know what the terms elevation and depression mean. So I want you to imagine just staring straight in front of you, okay? So your horizontal line of sight without moving your eyes around. You're just staring straight in front. If you want to look up into the corner of your roof, instead of using your eyes, if you tilt your head up into that direction, that is your angle of elevation. The degrees that you've moved your head from this position to this position, that angle is your elevation. So on that drawing there, the angle of elevation is from the horizontal up. It's really important we're not using the angle from the vertical. And you can see why, it actually just looks a little bit silly. If I wanted to look at the corner of my roof, I wouldn't look to the top and then start coming down. That doesn't make any sense. So we're always going horizontal first and then up, and that is our angle of elevation. The angle of depression is exactly the same. We're starting at horizontal and then looking at something on the ground, and the tilt of that head or the tilt of our eye line down is the depression angle that we're trying to find. So you might be able to see here that the horizontal black line and then up or down to a point of interest gives us a little bit of a right angle. I'll show you now, if I put on that there for the angle of elevation, we can see that the right angle triangle has been formed from an imaginary line and then up some distance. So in order to get these questions right, we only have to do three things. We have to interpret the question, we've got to read it, then we've got to draw it, and then we've got to do the maths at the end. You'll usually get a mark for the drawing, so that's a really important part of this whole process. For the drawing, we do have a pro tip. I want you to always do the horizontal line first and then the up or down from the elevation or depression. What's really important here is you don't take your pen off the page. So we're going across and then up or down and finally complete the triangle as your very last line. This will show you exactly where the angle of elevation or depression is in relation to your drawing. So we're gonna have a look at this question and we're gonna interpret it first. I'm just gonna highlight some of the key terms, but the most important thing for this is kind of try to imagine the situation, right, with your mind's eye, because then you'll see, oh yeah, the angle is actually quite easy to see. So the first thing we've got is that a person is elevated 60 meters on a cliff. So we've got this 60 meters above sea level and they're looking out onto the horizon and they see a boat far out to sea, which is 200 meters away. So if you imagine yourself standing on a cliff, we know that we've got an angle of depression because we have to look down in order to see it. So that tilt down, that is our angle of depression that we're trying to find. So with our drawing, we need to replicate that angle. So following our three pro tips, we're gonna find this really easy. The first thing we have to do is draw a horizontal line, okay, straight away. That is our line of sight that grounds this whole question. And now because we know that we are looking down to see the boat, we have to draw this depression line in, and that position there is where the boat is. Finally, I've got to make it look like a triangle, so I'm going to go from the boat back up to my original cliff. So I know that the cliff is over here, right? That's where the cliff is in this scenario. This line here that shows us the height of this question is imaginary as well, but it does not matter because the 60 is assumed on both sides. Now what we've got to do is chuck in our information in order to get this right. So we know we're 60 meters up from the boat, so this length here is 60, and the boat was 200 meters away from the cliff, so 200 is here. The angle that we're interested in finding is the angle of depression, so that is this angle from our original position. This is now just a trig question, finding an unknown angle. All you have to do is the Sokar Toa, 
If you do that, you're gonna get full marks. So for this one, I've got opposite and adjacent, so I know I must have tan. So tan of the angle that I'm trying to find is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 60 over 200. In order to get this correct, I have to use the inverse of tan. So the angle of interest is equal to tan minus one, 60 over 200. Type that into your calculator and you're gonna find that the angle of depression for this question is 17 degrees rounded to the nearest degree. That's all we have to do for these questions. It's a one step equation, but the marks come from the pre-work before the maths actually starts. In this next example, we're gonna look at something that is important for these questions. You can't forget about your original height. So if you're 1.5 meters or two meters, that comes into play when trying to determine how tall something is because we're going from your eye line, not from your feet. So in this one, we've got a person that's 1.5 meters tall and they're looking up 18 degrees. So their angle of elevation is 18 degrees and up there is the top of a building. We know that we're 32 meters away from the building and always assume that the road is flat, okay? This distance is flat, so that gives us the base of this right angle triangle. So when we draw this out, I do want you to put a little person there because it'll help you just remember that we have to add that 1.5 to the building's height at the very end. So we've got this person who is looking out all the way to a building that's up here. So that distance we're away is 32 meters. So I'm gonna put that in straight away. And now to complete my triangle, I go from the top all the way back down to my eyesight. The angle of elevation or from my eyesight up to the top of the building is 18 degrees. So now I've got all the information I need in order to find the height of the building. The height's gonna be over here. And just at the end, we need to add that 1.5 meters that's in this part here. Again, because we're looking from our eyes, not from our feet. So again, we're gonna have tan in this example. You are actually gonna find that most of these questions are tan related, unless there's a rope or a wire, because it's really hard to exactly know how long the hypotenuse is gonna be. So for this one, we've got tan of 18 is equal to opposite over adjacent, so H over 32. If I multiply that 32 over to the other side, I've got 32 tan 18 is equal to my unknown. Throw that into your calculator, just like that, and you'll get that H is equal to 10.4 meters. Just remembering that we do have that last 1.5 in order to get the correct building height. So we've got the total height is 10.4 plus 1.5 which is equal to 11.9 meters. And that's all the working that we have to do for this question. So we can see here that the angle of depression or elevation is exactly the same as our normal trig problems. We're either trying to find an unknown side or an unknown angle just using our trig ratios. So we're just gonna have a look at a really quick theory part of this that is important for your understanding. Let's say we've got a scenario where someone's jumping off a diving block, right, that's 10 meters up, and someone's watching from the ground. In this example, you could be asked to find what the angle of elevation is from the spectator, how far are they looking up, or you could be asked to find the angle of depression from the person on the block. What's really interesting is that these two angles are going to be exactly the same due to these things called alternate angles. Because both of their eye lines are horizontal or parallel, if we have a line that intersects both of them, they're gonna have alternate angles. And I'm just gonna draw that in. So those two horizontal lines are there, and then the hypotenuse is gonna be the same for both people. They're gonna be looking directly at one another, and that is exactly gonna make two triangles. We've got this one up here, which is useful to find the angle of depression or this angle here. And we've also got from the guy on the ground's perspective, the angle of elevation, which goes up this one, which is here, our angle of elevation. So what's really important for us to know is that D and E in this example are exactly the same. So there are some really good visual proofs of these alternate angles on YouTube already, and I've linked some of those in the description. I would highly recommend having a look at these because it will just round out your understanding of this topic. But all we really need to know is that the angle of elevation and the angle of depression in the same question are exactly the same because the perspectives change. I hope you found this lesson helpful and I'll see you later.